Shy Guy Talks, Episode One. Hello, Tony. What's up? Hello, mate. Very good. Everything's good. Enjoying life. Enjoying the day. Yeah. What about you? Um, yeah, not bad. Not bad. I'm sort of like、um, okay with everything. Whereas、okay. I think you try and put a positive spin on everything. Is that a conscious decision, or do you feel like you were born that way? Not born. It's it's a lot to do with the experiences.、Um, you, you, we all go through different hardships and adversities, and it's what you what you make of it. Actually, before I get into that, I wrote a blog this morning called "Life Is Suffering," and、um, I talk about that in there,、um, TonyDillon dot com. And、um, basically,、um, I talk about how hardship is unavoidable; it's inevitable. So, if everyone's gonna go through these difficult times, are you just gonna waste negative energy on it and、um, drain yourself? Even though it's guaranteed to happen in life, or are you gonna accept that? Right, I'm gonna have challenges today. I can look at it from a different light. So, no, it's not 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 born with it. No, I'd say I'm just. It's a conscious decision, sure, because the first any time anything goes wrong, the first thought, the first thing that comes to your mind is. Oh no! But when you when you think about it, it's conscious, of course. But I guess the goal is to make it completely unconscious. Whether we can do that, I don't know. But habits, right? You just got to keep going and see see where you get to. But、I、definitely, it's conscious. Yeah, just trying, trying, trying. So, what do you recommend people do? Say they're encountering a challenge in their life. Yeah. And their immediate reaction is negativity. Rejection. This can't be happening. Oh my God! Why is this happening to me? What's the first thing that they should do? It's well, that's a good question because if you haven't, if you haven't up to that point faced the reality that you are going to be met with adversity and hardships, you're going to struggle initially. But sooner or later, it's going to sink in, right? What situation you're in, and if you keep thinking you're not in that situation, keep pushing it to the side, then nobody can help you. Ultimately, you've got to help yourself. I think the first thing is accept, accepting. Your reality. So you're in this rut. You're in this situation. You've got to accept your situation, and only then I think you can move forward. Because if you, if you put a blind, if you turn a blind eye to it, how can you, how can you fix something if you're not looking at it? You've got to look at it. You've got to know what's going on. Right, and <clears throat> it's important to have all that information there because often it's the what if, the、mm. unknown part、mm. that's the most frightening, and that's what you most want to run away from.、Mm. But Even if the situation is bad,、mm. if you know exactly why it's bad and how it's bad, it all of a sudden becomes a lot easier because then you're dealing with known knowns. Then yes. So even if okay, so this is the situation we got. Yeah, yeah. So you can actually move on from there rather than thinking, oh my god, what's going to happen next? You know, being in that state of chaos. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I'd say, adding on to that, is the accountability. You've got to be accountable. For everything that happens in your life, and this is a tough pill to swallow because a lot of things happen out of our control. But we can't think something's happened in our life that we have no input in whatsoever. I don't believe that. I think that's I honestly think that's a load of crap.、Um, it's tough, tough pill to swallow. But everything that happens in your life, you're involved in it because it's your life. It's whether whether you react to something, whether you're acting positively or negative negatively to something as a consequence. Everything you do as a consequence. So. Accountability solves so many issues. I really believe that if if you're not walking around like you own yourself, like you you own this, you own your space. This is you. This doesn't belong to anyone else. What you do is from you. If you don't have that mindset, you're not willing to take accountability for yourself. Then you're always stuck in that victim mentality, and that doesn't serve anyone. Because then you're always looking for ways out when things get tough. Accountability, I think, going back to the first question, that's the key to how people, I think, to overcome different situations. Okay, it's my responsibility. I'm in this situation. What can I do to get out of it or improve it? That's immediately positive then, because <laughs> also, because you have to have the belief that you can do something about it,、mm. even if at minimum all it is is your reaction to it.、Mm. So you can always regain control of your consciousness,、mm. so to speak. Yeah, like we were saying, and you see, you see it in so many books.、Um, whatever happens, a lot of things that happen are out of your control. But how you react to it is completely in your control. Right.、And、if you remember that, that can help solve a lot of problems. I think. Like make your bed, right? Make your bed. It's a key. It's a cornerstone. It's a keystone habit to 
helping you propel into bigger things. Start small and then keep growing into something big. Everything starts small, you keep growing into something big. Make your bed, tonydenon.com, another blog. Why did you make your blog? Great idea. Sorry, idea, question. It was a great idea to do it, you said. It's it's great great idea. Idea. If it's, you say so, you're not right. It's a great idea to do it. It's a great question from you. Um, Thank you. So as you know, and as you know, um, some other people may know, may not, um, I want to become a coach in the future. Um, life coach, for sure, but I want to specify a bit more. I want to work with more mentally challenged people and help them to overcome certain barriers in their lives. I want to focus on mental health, relationships. I want to focus on day-to-day -day things, if I'm being specific. Your relationship, your job, your income, all of this. Um, and I've, I, I like to do my reading, I like to do my uh, writing, and a year ago actually when I was on the way to China uh, for my second time living in China, I remember I was on the flight and I said to myself, I'm going to start a blog as soon as I get settled in. This is what I want to do. The idea hit me when I was on the plane, you know when you get those ideas. Nothing happened. A year later, I was in Sanya with yourself actually, and I was in my bed and it hit me again and that triggered it. And then I, I remember going into your room asking you um, whether I should create a website or do a YouTube video and we were having a chat yeah. about this. And that was it. As soon as I got back, I started the website, worked on it, started writing. So I've got many ideas, but it's just formulating them into a document actually, um, tidying it up and getting something out there. That was it. It's just always a desire to help people and a good way to do that now anyway at this stage is to have a website and just write, share, sh get comfortable sharing my ideas to the world. Yeah, just getting in that habit of producing and delivering value to yeah. people, right? That's the thing. <clears throat> people think, oh, I want to write. But it's yeah. like, what's more, uh, just as important as what to write is who to write to. Yeah. What I like about your articles, I was... Um, I'm very impressed by the fact that they're very easy to read. And you know it's the hardest thing ever to make your articles easy to read, uh, strangely enough. Mm -hmm. um, being able to explain things that are quite complicated in a simple way, yeah. and it's short and snappy, and you've got it down. And it seems like you've learned from the books you've been reading, because uh, you've re read some killer books, and um, uh, those, those ones are very well written. I'm yeah. thinking of... How to win friends and influence people yeah. that is very good advice but also really well mm. written yeah, yeah, yeah what out of the things you've read recently do you feel have been the most inspirational to you in terms of my writing or i suppose in terms of your writing and and everything else i suppose okay well i'd like if, to... if there's different answers then you can tell me yeah sure i'd like to shout out firstly the road less traveled Okay. Um, incredible book, the most enlightening book I've ever read. By who? That is an excellent question. <laughs> Scott Beck. Scott, Scott, Beck. Scott Beck, right. Yes, yes, yes. Fantastic, um, fantastic. I think he's a psychiatrist and as the stuff he talks about, the cases he's had and the clients he's had, that's the type of work I'm very interested in, how he's um, helped mentally challenge people with all sorts of problems. I think that's what he does is great. So that in terms of inspiration and the way it's written, absolutely brilliant. But if you're talking about what's influenced my writing, it's hard to pinpoint a book, yeah. but uh, The Way of the Superior Man is fantastically written. Um, fantastically is not even a word. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, think, I think it is. Oh, it is? Fantastically. Fantastically. Well, reading will help you both out. <laughs> yeah. I think it is. I think it is. But yeah, that book in particular has, the chapters are really short. Yeah. I a lot of self-help books, right, they pad it out with obvious stuff mm -hmm. to, to pad it out, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But this book is very short, very snappy, mm -hmm. bam, 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 value, 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 truth Brilliant, isn't it? So it's definitely one to keep going back to, you know, it's very simple. But then you can read a chapter and like meditate on that for 10 minutes or a day if you wanted to. Yeah. You can get some real value from it. So that's uh, Where the Superior Man by Who? That is another excellent question. Yeah, and Billy Bob Thornton. No, it's <laughs> not, not a Thornton. No, no it wasn't him, no. Uh, ah, David D. Dada. David Dada, David yes. David Dada. Yes. And he, he has some um, not politically correct things in that book. Yeah, I know. About, that, that's why I kind of appreciated it. Mm. About um, 
gender roles and sort of reconciling gender roles with the modern day, mm -hmm. right? So at the moment, everything is about breaking down the traditional gender roles. Yeah. Like men and women um, don't have to be beholden to the old fashioned gender roles. Yeah. Okay. This guy is saying, yes, but there's a reason why we've fallen into these categories of masculine and feminine. Yeah. And they both serve each other and are good in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, and also talking about sexuality, very frankly. Yeah. Rather than seeing it as a thing to hide away or to, uh, to be ashamed of. Sorry, just to go back on the question you asked. Um, I think apart from the books, a lot, a lot of it was a conscious decision in terms of the articles making it short and snappy because I thought to myself, well, how can I, I don't want to make it too long. It's not necessarily a book. It's something short and snappy. It's hard to think of a book that um, triggered that or if it did, it's, um, it's happened subconsciously because I, I can't. Well, yeah, I think it. maybe it just happens sort of, you, know, you absorb it through lots yeah. of different things you've kind of read and think so. you know what you like, so you yeah. can really reproduce that. So yeah, I recommend you go to totydillon.com and check out the articles, folks. Um, so you're in China now, and it doesn't seem... Uh, how would you make the connection? So you've got your ultimate life goal, right? Yeah. But you decide to come to China to teach English yeah. as a foreign language. Yeah. Um, so why did you decide to come to China? That, that was, that's part of the life goal. Um, when I was in my final year of university in 2018, I, as soon as I started my final year, I said to myself, next year I'm living abroad, I'm getting a job abroad. I don't want to necessarily travel, I want to get a job, I want to work abroad. Um, as soon as I finished university, I only applied for jobs abroad. Got an offer in Portugal for a company called Teleperformance, so that was sales and marketing. But then I, I accepted the offer, but then after doing my research, the turnover rate was crazy. Man, everyone was like leaving so many people. And it didn't feel right, so I remember when I got the offer, I was like, Okay, so I'm going to Portugal. So eventually I said no because something wasn't right. And I remember I was in the gym with my brother and I applied to work for EF to teach English in China, in Hefei. And I remember getting a job offer and I was in the gym with my brother. I was checking my phone and I was like, you know when you feel that buzz? And you're yeah. like, this is it. Yeah. That was it. Always wanted to live abroad. Um, it felt right then, I don't know. I just, I'm an impulse guy. You've got to trust your impulses and your, your feelings. And it felt right, man. So I thought, let's do it. Yeah. I mean, and to be fair, looking at it, I've always, long term, I think that's a subconscious thing and conscious, I always want to wanna live a memorable life. I want to live a life where at the end I can, not, who knows if I remember it, we don't know what happens in the afterlife, that's another story. Yeah, yeah. But you, wanna, you think of it, don't you? You think, I want to get to my deathbed and think, I'm glad I did this, 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 this. I'm yes. glad I have these children and these grandchildren and this family. I'm glad I made something meaningful, meaningful out of myself. Simple as that. Honestly, right. simple as that. Right. Simple as that. And then, for one reason or another, EF didn't work. Why was that? Um, so, well, firstly, in my first week, I tore my, I ruptured my Achilles oh, tendon. Yeah. And I still haven't recovered from that. I still limp a bit, to be yeah. honest. I still <clears throat> feel the odd pain. Even now when I'm moving, I can feel it. Um, and they didn't really give me any time off. They expected me to work. And then I also got, um, I had serious food poisoning. I had diarrhea for around a month. No, it was terrible, man. And um, but that didn't factor into EF. Yes, EF, EF itself. It wasn't a good environment. There was the manager. Manager was not great. She had no management skills. With all due respect to her, um, it was basically as her and as foreigners, about six or seven foreigners. Also, the company wasn't right. Nothing was great. The money wasn't great. The company wasn't great. And it's hard to pinpoint something, but I always trust my gut instinct. And my gut instinct said, Tony, leave. And Actually, when I told them I was leaving a week after, it was announced that that school was going to be shut down. Yeah. Trust yourself. It's funny how, yourself. How, those, how those things happen, isn't it? Trust yourself. That's all I would say. It's very strange. Like, people will um, dismiss that as hocus pocus yeah. stuff. But it's not. So many strange things have happened to me as well, yeah. and I'm sure yeah. to you, it, along those sort of lines about certain feelings you get mm. and almost like life is teaching you something mm. as, as it's happening, that is like, this is really weird. Yeah. Now, even if it's just a trick of the subconscious, yeah. it's useful for us. Yeah. So, I'm just gonna grab my coffee real quick. Yeah, absolutely. But that reminds me of another time, talking of trusting your gut, when I was um, working, when I was in my second year of university, and we were looking for 
placements because I was doing a sandwich year, so for my third year I was going to work. I ended up getting a job in Southampton, but I had two interviews in London. I was getting the bus there to London at 6, 6 a.m. on the Saturday and Sunday. It's a two-day interview process. I got the job and um, they were trying to pressure me to start and find an apartment. It didn't feel right, so I was more than go for it. And then a couple of days later I told him, I'm not taking it. Um, and it was quite, it was quite difficult because it was, it was high pressure. They were pressuring me to take it, but it didn't feel right. Anyway, skip forward the next year when I got back to university, I had like some seminar, and we're just talking to one of the girls there, and she was saying um, how she hated her placement. And I was like, oh, where was it? And she said, Hen and she said, Henley Recruitment Group. That's the people that offered me the job, and she left after a, a month. Again, I'm not saying it was terrible, but I trusted my gut, and it said it was horrible, and this girl had the same experience, so. Trust yourself, man. Yeah. Yeah. I find it difficult to, um like convey that sometimes though uh, because we second guess ourselves all the time I know I do yeah. and I I hate this term really but overthink it yeah and um, but it'd be like years later I'm like I should have just ugh, you know yeah. so it's really difficult but after all that with the F yeah you didn't you didn't think China's the issue you thought it was just that job yeah so, so what happened is you apply for other jobs in China Straight away. This is brilliant. Another sign. I was on indeed.com. Yep. Brilliant job, job site. And um, I was actually in China in my room because I, I knew I was leaving by then. I was looking for new jobs. And I was searching a job um, in the city. I put Birmingham, which is right next to my hometown, Coventry. And then um, it came up with this job for First Leap. And I was like, all right, I'll click it. And I got, got invited to an interview. And at the time, I was thinking, I don't, I'll, I'll just go back home, but I'll just take the interview. I did it. And um, yeah, I did great on the interview and I spoke to one of my mentors and he said, you know what, take it. And I was, I was thinking to myself, because I, I was feeling a bit unfulfilled, only a couple of months in China and I loved it, it was great, wasn't homesick at all, um, it was fantastic and I felt like I had unfinished business. So anyway, went back home, worked on, taught online from my house for a few months and went back to China. China's been absolutely fantastic to me. Yeah. Right, right. Even with the food issues and... The food, the Achilles, that was, that's not, nothing, that, that, honestly, back then, I'm really proud of how I uh, behaved back a year ago then. I had no, I was not negative about my injury. I was laughing it off. Even the sickness, of course, it was, it was funny, but it was difficult, of course, to deal with. Yes, yeah, it's, it's imagine nice. Diarrhea for one month. Yeah. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish that for anyone. But um, no, I dealt with it really well, and I was, so, I was in good spirits. It's a good time, it's a good time. I knew this interview would end up talking about your ass at some point. <laughs> Listen, just keep it real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my days. Um, so, yeah, you came to Woohoo. Yeah. Um, well, you did the two weeks training in Beijing first. What did you think of that? I enjoyed it. Um, it, was, it was good. Um, it was very fast-paced. Yeah. Just as soon as you get there, as you know, um, right, you're in, the, you're in the classroom, you're taking notes and whatnot, and then you're meeting at this time the next day, and you're doing this, and it's very, very quick two weeks. But then met some nice people, we had some good times, went out, some good food. Um, yeah, it was fast paced, but I was at the, while I was doing it, at the same time, I was just excited to actually get to my new city and get home, right, and settle down, if, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I loved it. I felt like it was like a very strange two week holiday. Okay. Region. Yeah. And had a right laugh, met a few friends. Did you explore much? A little bit, yeah. Little bit. Went to um, Tiananmen Square and oh, nice. Forbidden. City, yeah, yeah, and all that. Um, yeah, man, it's a complete difference between my first experience in China, which was not good, but something similar. I actually had not a very good experience in China the first time I came just to visit. Okay, I was not prepared at all. Yeah, I didn't have mobile data, I didn't have WeChat, mm -hmm. this and the other, so I found everything an absolute ball ache to do. Mm -hmm. um, but for whatever reason. Things just fell into place, like you said, about, about coming back to China. Yeah. Um, I wanted to teach English anyway, and I was thinking about other countries, but then this offer came in and it ticked all the boxes. And I was like, okay, this yeah. is a no-brainer. Yep. Yeah. No regrets. So what was it for you then that, um, I guess, why did you want to, was it specifically teach English or was it live abroad and actually work abroad? What was it for you? So... I guess the first, my first instinct was I don't want to be in the UK at all. Right, right. Um, I could go into the reasons, but it'd be too long. Um, but yeah. 
<clears throat> the teaching English for something teaching English abroad was something I wanted to do anyway. Like one the New Year's that I was in Thailand, I it was New Year's Day, woke up, had my coffee and all that, and I was it just sort of one of those ideas would just goes clean. Yeah. Yeah, why don't you go teaching like everyone is saying, hey, you should try that. Because mm. it's something I never even thought about. I knew it was an option mm. for other people. Even when I wrote my book, mm. uh, I mentioned it as something that um, someone might want to do. Yeah. But it was before I had ever done it myself, mm. and I thought, why not? Mm. You know, and it'd definitely be something a little bit out of my comfort zone because I've never done anything like that before. Yeah. With the added facts that it gave, gives me an opportunity to be in a different country whilst also having that stability of the full-time job, which was something I was craving whilst I was in Thailand and Vietnam because mm. the instability was killing me. Like yeah. normally I'm quite an open person and willing to take risks and happy to move about, yeah. uh, move from city to city. And I find that really exciting. Mm. At the same time, after doing it for 18 months, <laughs> boy, you're sick of it. Yeah. You just want to, I just want to have my own room and yeah, <laughs> you know, not have to think about oh my god, where am I going next week? Yeah. So, but on the other hand, I didn't just want to go home and get a crappy job. Okay. In Chatteris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so having that base, then you're saying having that yeah, base, you need to come back to. Yeah, it was a really good compromise. Good. So yeah. that was that was the reason, and then uh, yeah, I did it. There was various reasons why I um, it got delayed. Oh, okay. That's some my story. I'll probably okay. tell in the channel some other time. Yeah. Okay. So, woohoo. Mm. What do you think of woohoo? What, like is, what is woohoo? Where the hell are we? <laughs> Good question. What, what is a woohoo? <laughs> um, how to say it? We're, we're three hours away from Shanghai. I know, you can only compare it to other cities. Three hours away from Shanghai. That's it. Um, to the... West. We're the west of Shanghai, that's right, yeah, three hours away. Um, we're in Anhui province. Um, I like it. No, it's, it's small. I don't know, it's hard to describe apart from when you compare it to other cities. Yep. It's small, but not really. Small for China, right? Yep. For a Chinese city. It's not really that small. Um, I like it. There is, it's not the busiest place in the world. It's peaceful, it's relaxing. That's, that's definitely a key. Um, and there is actually quite a lot to do. There's a museum, there's the four theme parks. I love theme parks, I love roller coasters, so that's always fun. Now there is a lot to do. Yeah, you've got the ancient, you've got the ancient town, ancient you've got town. Squirrel Town, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you've got a new one, in a new ancient town that's being built in the middle of the city. You've got Mara and Chifong, yes. the glass bridge yes, yes, yes. down the road, and then you've got three hours down south to Huangshan, so of course you have. Yellow Mountains. Mm -hmm. So there is actually quite a lot to see. Yeah, it's not, but that's the thing, a lot of it's not necessarily in the city, but it's not. It's still in the county, actually. I think Maran Chifong is still in Wuhu County. Yes. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot. There is a lot to see. It's not your biggest city with your biggest biggest restaurants and your. I don't know what else is in the big cities or your, your landmarks and all this and that. But there is, there is a lot to do. Not as much as maybe you'd expect, but but then again, I didn't really have any expectations. I just came here, and the city's been great. It's really us. Really us. How do you find the social life, or lack thereof, in Wuhu? So, hmm, social life. I mean, there's enough things out there to do that you can go in groups, whether it's eating, as we all know, the food culture here, especially the hot pot. You go in groups, there's your bars and whatnot, um, which you usually go with people anyway. Um, social life. What I'm really referring to is there's more foreigners in Nanjing, for example. Right. So there's more going on, so right. to speak. And people in Nanjing are always telling me about these group meetings they have. It would be like a film club or a language exchange club and stuff like that. We don't seem to have anything like that here. Yeah. Or very little. Yeah. So do you miss that sort of thing or are you, are you quite happy to just... Well, I've never been to a film club or a language club, so I don't miss it at all. <laughs> and, and to be fair, <laughs> and honestly, um, it depends what you have, it's not what you like doing. I, me personally, I like working out in the gym, I like writing, I like reading, um, and I like traveling. So even if there was a lot to do, that doesn't necessarily mean I'd be doing everything. You've got, you've got your own patterns, you know, you, you build relationships with things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because on Friday night, 
<laughs> yeah, the chippy tea. Friday night chippy tea. Saturday night Chinese. Exactly. And Sunday you got your roast dinner, haven't you? That's it, exactly. So what I'm saying is, you build relationships with things. And exactly, precisely. That doesn't mean necessarily if I was in a bigger city, I'd, my lifestyle would change. It wouldn't, because you are who you are. You like to do what you like to do. I'm still going to read, write, right. exercise, no matter where I am. So, lack of social life, really. Yes, from what you've just said, there isn't the community, but it makes no difference to me, to be honest. It's hard to say because I'm not in that environment, but I still know I do what I do now. Do you share this same feeling that I have? That you sort of, you have to remind yourself every now and again, like, I'm in China. It, it becomes normal mm. very quickly. Mm. Do, you, do you share the same feeling? Yeah, I think I've mentioned it to a few times where we'll just sit, we'll, we'll be doing something. You're like, hang on, mate, we're in China. <laughs> and you look around, you're like, okay, I live here. This is my stuff. This is my view. It's, it's nice it's nice to see where we've come from or what we've seen or what we've been through to where we are now. It's an upward trajectory and long may it continue. That's how I feel. Yeah, good. But is that something you, when, do you... Do you ever look back and think, right, I'm in China now. Is, do, you, do you feel that... Do you get lost in the moment? Do you feel that gratitude when you have that feeling? What, what's your yes, feeling? Yes, uh, I'm actually... It's gratitude, but more than that, it's just complete befuddlement. Oh. Like how... <laughs> How have I ended up here? But not in a bad way. Okay. You know, some, some people might be like, oh God, what am I doing here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What am I doing with life? But I'm just more like, okay, that's an interesting turn of events. Yeah. Of what on earth is going to happen next? Yes. And lately I have been like that. Like when I was in my early 20s, it was like, no, I have to have a certain objective oh. and have to have certain points. You know, on the road to that objective, if I'm not meeting up with those standards, I've done something wrong. Okay. Um, but now I'm more like, you know what, it's been so mad and so crazy in my life that mm -hmm. you just got to catch the green lights, baby. All right, all right. Catch yeah. the green lights. Just let things flow. Okay. Really recommended. It's very, not very, but quite new agey book called The Surrender Experiment. Ooh. He was a university professor who was very interested in consciousness and meditation. Mm. And he was obsessed with meditation. And he was like, this is the key to life. I'm just going to go away and live in, um, on a patch of land that I bought myself and meditate all day. That's all I'm going to do. Mm. Um, but he just couldn't get to that point where his mind was completely blank. So he was fighting against that voice in your head mm. that's always nattering away. And we all have it. It's always judging and pointing things out and criticizing and making connections here and there. And, it's, and what he was trying to achieve was to shut that off and kind of go deep, get in beyond it. But eventually he decided this is not possible. So um, he decided, okay, I'm going to do an experiment. I'm just going to let go. I'm going to not resist. I'm going to let life take me where it wants to take me. And part of that, it was linked to his, his voice, you know, so the, so the voice rejects everything, right? So anything new, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Bloody hell, are you sure? And so the trick is listening to it, but then forgetting about it. Let it pass, right? And let all those emotions, that voice is staring up inside you, the bad memories that is making you reject these sort of things, mm. sort of flow through you and then... Let go. So he goes, so the rest of the book is how the, a number of strange events happened in his life where people will come up to him and say, listen, can I build something on your land? I want to build a temple. And immediately his brain's going, no, why would I do, why on earth would I do that? But then he remembered, I'm doing an experiment here. And so he lets it pass, waits, 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 and goes, oh, okay then, <laughs> you know. And what does he end up doing? He ends up leading a whole friggin' spiritual revolution on this piece of land in California. And they built. He's, now he's building three temples, and he's building temples all over California. And because he's built all these temples, he now knows a lot about construction and real estate. So he, he so he's like, oh god. So and then somebody hires him to make a conservatory. And he's like, no, I don't, I don't know how to do this. And then he remembers, hang on, I've built six temples. So <laughs> he's like, okay, I'll do it just because you're my mate. You know. Mm. Next thing you know, that's his business. He's got a construction business, and so on and so forth. And then he gets into coding. So. And there's all sorts of things that happen in his life um, that takes him in wild, wonderful directions simply yeah. because he let go and forgot about the rejection 
the rear that comes in into your you know immediate consciousness and I suppose that's part of what we're talking about when um, the uh, when we were talking about um, the, the feeling your intuition yeah right you have to, but it's not like right there sometimes sometimes you have the immediate mind-based rejection yeah. so it blocks out that intuition right so you're not listening to your heart so mm. I know it's very flowery and romantic but it's a definite. It's ab- it's absolutely true. Everyone has this experience about that voice in your head that won't shut up, right? And I think we all recognise that there's something like deeper than that that, is, that guides us in a certain direction, our conscience, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And um, and so through this experiment, as he treats it like a science experiment, he was, he was scientifically raised this guy. So mm-hmm. he was saying, well, look at the evidence. This is what happened to my life. It went crazy and wild and wonderful and I've got all these memories and, wow. and now I'm really rich as well. So that's not bad either. So now I'm more along those lines. I'd still have goals. Okay. But I realise that this life occurs and I'm willing to roll with those punches to make this happen. I've got about three or four different analogies going on in that explanation. But that's, that's where I'm going. So back to the original question about okay sitting back and realizing oh my god i'm in china wow that's sort of how it is just like well that was interesting you know when you're watching a really great movie yeah yeah, yeah. and it's like, how the hell did we get here but i love it yeah. you know it's it <clears throat> taking you in directions that you did not expect it's like completely doing something new with the storyline we've had we've watched so many movies that where we're used to certain story beats playing out and we can almost predict the plot as it's going on, right? But with certain stories, certain movies, certain TV shows, it takes directions that you don't expect at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, people might say, oh, that's just violating, violating expectations is, uh, you know, it, it'll turn people off. It doesn't, in fact. It's very exciting to encounter something new. Yeah. So that's why people love stuff like that. So that's the way, the way I think. Mm-hmm. And. Um, also, to link it back to one of your blog posts, um, in any good movie, there's conflict, mm. bad stuff happens. Mm. So linking back to suffering and pain as learning tools, if life is kind of like a story, of course there's going to be conflicts and there's going to be tough times. Yeah. Because there's something greater that comes out of it. A movie with no bad guy is a terrible movie. There you go. Right? Well, at least a movie without adversity. Mm. A video game with no enemies to fight or no con- no conflicts, no objective that requires overcoming obstacles is a bad game. Yep. Right? So, and what do you think of that analogy? I think that's the top one, honestly. That, that is top. You're right. Anything, I think anything with... There's no challenge. There's nothing, nothing to really dig your teeth into. What are you doing it for? Yeah. Where's the thrill in anything if, there's, if you know exactly what's going to happen and what you're going to get? There's no excitement. You need to... You need to it, doesn't, it doesn't nourish anyone, does it? You need, no, it doesn't. You need something that... I think, like you said there with the video games, that's, that's, that's 100% bang on. The only game... The games we enjoy is because there's, there's thrills, there's scares, there's people to attack, there's, there's, things, there's things to do, basically. There's something to strive towards. There's a goal to complete. Um, and going back to um, what you said there um, with uh, um, with that guy who built, who built those temples, um, exactly where you said just just let it go. And when you when you're in that, I guess when you because you've got those voices, we all got those voices that tell you that always trying to quickly judge something. But if you if you let that go, and um, sorry, it's not related to the point I was just talking about now, but it's completely what you said. Where if you let that go. Because no matter what, our, bra- our brains are primed to help you survive. And anything unknown is a threat. Yes. And so if, if you're willing to let that go, there's so much beauty out there that your brain's going to block from you. It's, it's, what does Eckhart Tolle say in his book, The Power of Now? He says, um, what does he say? He says, he says, observe the mind. So you're not actually your mind or your thoughts. You're actually higher than that, your higher power. So when, when you hear these negative thoughts or whatnot, look at them from the outside in. So they're here, right? That you're here, you're this. 
and you've got these two things, you're not actually them. Because we all, humans all have the same thoughts. If I move to another country, let's say I feel nervous, millions of other people have had that thought. If, I, if, I, if I've just spent a lot of money on something, I think, oh, and you get that money thought that you have a lack of money. Millions of people have that thought. We're always, I look at it like thoughts are like a plague. Negative ones, no they are, because everyone's had them. From millions of years ago to now, they're all a plague, everyone suffers from them. But yet we all act like we're the only ones suffering from them. And that's it's easy to do because we're all in our own world. But if, you, if you're willing to let that talk and realise it's not you, and push it out of the way, you can go wherever you want to go, man, honestly. When you're observing your thoughts, it's important not to judge them as well. Yeah. You can't beat yourself up for having these negative thoughts. They're just there. That's just what they are. They're inevitable. Yeah, yeah. But say, oh, okay, that's interesting. And then move on, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, that's got nothing to do with the first point I made, but it just came in my head, so I thought it really But no, that is, that is part of it, though, because being able to let go means being able to see these obstacles, yeah. and one of them is your mind. Yeah. Um, maybe one of the biggest ones. The biggest one, I think, is your mind, because how you perceive anything is how it is in your reality. If you perceive it to be good, that's it, it's good, because you think it's good. If you think it's bad, it's bad because you've said it's bad. You talk about that in your book, don't you? Um, you say, I think on the last chapter, you say, if you can understand this, forget everything else I wrote about in the book. Whatever you think is how it is. You create your own reality. You say that in your last chapter in your book. Yeah. Um, if you think traveling is, you know, scary or whatever, it will be. If you think, or whatever you think, whatever you make your mind to believe, it is whatever you believe. Yeah. And it's, it's an excellent point. It is an excellent point because... I mean, we, we, we have the power, our mind, we control what we want in our life. And if you think something's good, and you really honestly believe that, then you're going to act like it's good. You're going to have these positive emotions about it. If you think it's negative, you're going to act in the opposite manner. So, yeah, I mean, there's, there's so much to this psychology life. You could, you could talk all day and, let's be honest, the beauty of it is we don't really know anything. We just, and I love that you, when you hear all these people, these, you know, famous accredited geniuses, Jordan Peterson, for example, the Child Rules of Life, he even he says he doesn't know anything. And all these guys, they, they openly say it because there's so much of the unknown. Yep. That's what do we know? But we can only know what we, what we encounter and what we make up. And even that was just our opinion. I mean, we'll go through it, but everything... Everyone's so sure about things, aren't they? This is the way the world <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah. Oh. They'll die on that hill. Yeah. I think that's why going, going to a foreign country is so important because you, in order to survive you have to put those preconceptions leave them at home because uh -huh. you simply won't survive if you come here and think everything has to be how it works back home your last five minutes you want to go back home so yeah. if you want if you really want to get something out of the experience you have to park that yeah and think okay refresh new input let's see how let's see how it goes people come to china and they're like Oh my god, nobody told me the food would be different. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, oh my, it's so disgusting. Like, just. I know. And I'm not saying just because I did the accent doesn't mean it's all American. <laughs> Everyone, you know. I'm sure there's a reason why I chose the accent when I was doing an example, but it could be anyone. It could be anyone. It could be anyone, including, you know. Yeah. Me and you. Yeah. And we've had this constant battle. Yeah. Anyway, what's your website? TonyDillon.com. Simple How do you spell Dylan? D H I double L O N. So Tony Dylan dot com. Simple. Yep. yep. And share the article with all, with all your friends. Um, yeah. What's next on the horizon for you? Uh, in terms of articles. In terms of anything. In terms of anything. Keep producing more content. Keep producing more articles. And um, so see see where we go. For now, it's just building that base of getting people, um, getting more subs, uh, subscribers. Because um, now I can actually send emails out figured out to do that today. Um, well, how to, um, cr I created a pop-up on my website and now I've got my email templates I can send out every time there's a new blog. So just keep creating, man. Keep creating, keep um, delivering for people and um, following my purpose. Cause Jay Shetty, um, he says something fantastic. He says something uh, which is a passion, basically, is what you, what you love, what you like to do. But your purpose is your passion when you're serving others. And that is absolutely brilliant. And that's, that's what I'm here to do. My passion is helping people. My purpose is actually, my passion is sharing my ideas, writing and learning and reading. It's one of my passions. 
My purpose is actually using all that content to help other people. So it's just creating more content now, that's all it is, and seeing, seeing where we get to. Still, what, 24, youngest I could ever be. And I think the way I look at it, by the way, is I'm only six years old. Let me finish. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, so You've got the maturity of a six-year-old, that's fine. <laughs> well, that's another story. But um, for all my life, right, until all of us, we're cared for by our parents. Fantastic. Everyone needs that. But after when you really break out your comfort zone, I think that's when life begins. When I moved to university, I was 18, and I hated it. I didn't leave, but I was so close to leaving. I was so homesick. But I got through that, and that helped me move to Ch uh, Southampton and then China. So I've only got six years' experience of real life experience doing things on my own. That's nothing. Yep. I'm only 24. We're, we're all both so young. There's so much to go. So, so a lot more to learn, a lot more to grow. So yeah, keep creating, keep delivering. Without my purpose. See, see, you see where it gets to me. I've got, I've got plans, but I com completely agree with what you said. Um, just just let, do what you've got to do and let it, let it flow. Surrender. Yeah. Yep. But at the same time, put the work in. You don't get Abs anywhere. Yes, of course, of course. In. Yeah. Put the work in, saying, yeah. leave the rest to God, the Lord, uh, the universe, the universe, fates, whatever you want, whatever you want. It. Yep. and job done, it'll work out. Last question. Yeah. Are you a free guy? <laughs> I am, I am. Talking of fruits, I need, I need a, I need a smoothie. I, I could do with a juice. We'll get a juice. Mango juice. Let's get it. Mango and passion fruit, Some, something like that. Hey juice, deliver right to the gaff. Okay, sweet ass. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for interviewing me. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for talking to us. That was very nice. That was very good. I'm glad you, glad you asked me to talk. Yeah, I love sharing out my ideas. All right, folks, viewers, Shagai Trevelyans. Um, yeah, subscribe for more interviews, for more travel videos, and um, yeah, I'll see you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye bye. Cheers.